We know one thing for sure, is that industrial agriculture already failed to feed the world. We have one billion people that are starving, and the, in addition to that, the ecological costs of industrial agriculture are huge. It produces one third of the uh, greenhouse gases, produces contamination of the environment with pesticides and fertilizers that are causing all kinds of environmental problems and health problems uh, worldwide. It is calculated that just in the United States, the environmental costs and health costs of agriculture, modern agriculture, is $4 billion per year. So it's a huge cost. And there, there, is, no there is no other alternative but agroecology in order to come up with, uh, with an alternative to produce enough food that is going to be healthy but is going to be accessible to. So today we know that peasants, which are about um, 350 million farms worldwide feed 50% of the world population. And most of those peasants, I would say 80% of them, are producing with agroecological methods. That is, methods that are based on their traditional knowledge, millinery knowledge, that, have, that has been passed from generation to generation. And some of them have been influenced by NGOs and other organizations that have been working with agroecology uh, to optimize the productivity of small farming systems throughout the world. And obviously we know that the problem of feeding the world doesn't have anything to do with production. So uh, I agree that we can enhance productivity and we can feed the world with agroecological methods. Um, and the, the matter of scale is not the area, it's the number of farmers and also their productivity per hectare. For example, in Cuba, which is the only post peak oil agriculture in the world, uh, you have farmers that belong to the ANAP, which is the National Association of Small Farmers, that in one hectare they produce enough food to feed between 15 and 30 people, based on protein or based on carbohydrates, depends on what they're producing. With energy efficiencies between 15 and 30, that means they put one kilocalorie and they obtain 30 kilocalories. The average efficiency of industrial agriculture is 1.5. So we're talking about very efficient, very biodiverse, and also very resilient systems, because what's happening is that we're seeing that everywhere studies have been done on the impacts of climatic events, extreme climatic events on productivity, monocultures are the first to go. Polyculture systems, agroforestry systems, diversified farming systems that small farmers have are the ones that are resilient. They're the ones that resist the impact and the ones that recover faster from the impact. So industrial agriculture is not going to only be limited by, by the ecological problems that it's causing or by the, the cost of, uh, of the petroleum, but also by not having ecological diversity that provides them, them with resiliency, they're going to collapse with climate change. So what we need is an alternative, which is agroecology, and that agroecological system is already being tested by thousands of farmers, the Via Campesina actually which is the largest peasant organization in the world, already adopted agroecology as their scientific technological approach to productivity within their food sovereignty framework. And uh, it's a matter of time as these methodologies, this knowledge st starts being transferred through the farmer to farmer, the campesino campesino methodology, uh, it will reach thousands of farmers, not only within the rural areas, but also in the urban areas.